Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Crossplay Podcast. My name is Nikki James, sitting here alongside Captain Zach. What up, what up? Dude, we are we're doing a quick and dirty today. Oh yeah. Podcast. We came real in dirty. We came in real dirty. We came in real unprepared. And we're just like, let's just get it out there and see how it sounds. I feel good though. I feel really good about it. How do you feel? I always feel good when I get dirty. Ooh, Dr. Phil good. <laughs> uh, have we been playing anything this week? Um, well, the new WWE. <sighs> Holy smokes. We're gonna get into that. That's a topic. We'll get into that soon. I too have been playing WWE. Uh what else? Um Pretty much that's it. That's Fortnite. A little for bit me of too, Fortnite. yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Pretty much WWE. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been playing mostly WWE. Um, took a day off work for it, which to pretty much everyone is absurd. And I agree that it is, but it's my guilty pleasure every year. Get time with my WWE game. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, been playing that. Been playing Rainbow Six, uh, of course. You will hear that from me every week. Been playing a little bit of Fortnite battle royale which uh, we also got a bit of news on let's use that as a terrible segue because i butchered <laughs> it into the first news story of the day <laughs> fortnite battle royale on the playstation 4 has reached 10 million players uh just within two weeks of launching uh what the fuck man it's pretty wowzers. rad wowzers max yeah um you know, like we said last week when we talked about the whole Fortnite Battle Royale versus uh, Player Unknown's Battleground thing, is that you create something new, you create something cool, people are going to bite off of it. Yep. And when you make your product, which is Player Unknown's Battleground, when you make it unavailable to people like PlayStation owners, uh, someone else is going to fill that void, and now you've lost out on those sales potentially. Yep. You so created a void in the marketplace. Congrats. To the developers, I think it's Blue Hole or something like that is the name of the developer. I'm pretty sure it's Blue Hole. I'm pretty sure. Let me know over on Twitter at Crossplay Pod if I am wrong. I'm sure you will. Uh, another good news in the old uh, game succeeding category, Cuphead, everyone's favorite 1930s animation-based platformer, uh, has surpassed 1 million units sold. Um, another rad stat. Another game I want to see succeed. Yeah. Um, are we going to beat that game one day or what? Yeah, we if we beat that airplane level. Which, oh, wait, we did. We did. We did. We're right past Barely, that. Barely, though. We're right past that. And yeah. uh, so, you know, finally, Xbox One has an exclusive. That's um, good. And they will have Player Unknown Battleground when that comes out for Xbox. But for now, they got Cuphead. <laughs> hey, I'm not. That sounded backhanded, that didn't it? Sounded very backhanded. Whoa, but no. for now, they got Cuphead. Cuphead. I'll stick with. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll suffer with my Uncharted Four and Horizon Zero Dawn. But nah, <laughs> you guys get Cuphead. I'm happy for your success. Fuck you, Xbox. Uh, in other interesting news, IGN has purchased a uh, gaming vendor, Humble Bundle. Uh, Zach, I, we talked a little bit earlier about Humble Bundle. Uh, seems like they provided a pretty good source uh, for games for for gamers on the cheap. Oh yeah, um, Humble Bum Humble Bundle sounds like a great way of purchasing games, but and it's a cute name. It's a cute name, bit of a mouthful, but still cute. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to say it while drunk <laughs> or something. Um, but uh, IGN buying it, the fact that a company that rates video games it stinks doesn't is it now selling video games it stinks a little bit yeah that's a little another uh, part of that is humble bundle within the last couple of years has started developing and publishing their own very small but very kind of good games so now the question is for you that i pose to you ethically should ign not, not review these games um if it's something yeah i think yeah i think it is unethical so they so they shouldn't review them but that's kind of like i mean they could review them but i don't know i guess you gotta know it you gotta you gotta as a consumer realize that and take every review they have well maybe you know, up with, front they just let you know in the review hey we own humble bundle the developer of this game yeah um, or or we own humble bundle a developer of a game that's rivaling this one we're about to review so yeah, I mean, then you got to put disclaimers everywhere yeah, at that because point. Because they, if they're, say they, they get Call of Duty and and uh, they have to review Battlefield, say they have a great Call of Duty bundle, do you think their review of Battlefield is going to be 100% honest? Or can you trust it to be when they when the worse that does, the better it is for Call of Duty? Um, 
Yeah, it, it, it raises the potential for a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just underhandedness from IGN. And IGN has not been um, a stranger to underhandedness in the past. So uh, hopefully this doesn't you know signal like a bad turn for, for Humble Bundle. They're pretty well liked among the, uh, the gaming community. So hopefully they stay as polished as of a turd as they are now. Yeah. Moving on down the list here. Uh, so you've recently heard, as have I, that uh, there's been some sexual harassment allegations blowing up in Hollywood. Weinstein. With the Weinstein. Yeah, <laughs> it's Weinsteiner. Weinstein. With the Weinsteiner. Scott Weinsteiner. Weinstein. Uh, but yeah, so that has been blowing up in Hollywood lately. Uh, he's dro- yeah. He was dropped from the board, uh, fired from his own company. He was blacklisted from the Academy. Um, uh, Damn. Of, yeah, he was just, he's been blacklisted everywhere. And it's only getting wow. worse. And someone who was so powerful in Hollywood before. So integral, yeah. That's crazy. Did you see the clip of uh, Courtney Young? Kurt Cobain's ex? What's her name? Courtney, Courtney Love. Love. Courtney Love. Did you see the clip of her like warning people about Weinstein like 10 years ago? No. And no. what's funny, it, okay, she was on the red carpet at some like low-rent award show or whatever and someone on the red carpet was interviewing her and they're like do you got any advice or what do you have to say to your fans or something like that and love being you know effed up as she always is probably was like <laughs> yeah um and she like took a second she's like if harvey weinstein invites you to a party at the hilton don't go and then she walks away Damn. the next day she was blacklisted from the sag Screen actors, Google. really? Yeah, she was blacklisted the very next day. Wow. Um, never saw her in a movie since. So things like that are, are crazy. Another clip I saw, and it's funny because you're seeing all these things about directors, um, and actors, and people that have known about this coming forward, like things, interviews they did in the past, where you can see them hinting at it, and now that it's coming to light, you go back and you watch those things, and it's kind of eerie. Um, there was a great interview I saw this morning between Dave Chappelle and James Lipton. Huh? And he was it Scrum True Lesson? <laughs> he's oh, he's dead, isn't he? Lipton? Yeah. Is he? I hope hope so. I think so. I hope not. <laughs> Jeez, that's a bad that's a bad mix of words. Gee, I hope so. Freudian slip. <laughs> Whoopsie doodles. <laughs> Someone just picked a whole bouquet of oopsie daisies. <laughs> no, um, but in the interview, um, Dave Chappelle just kind of went on a rant, and the point of what his whole rant at the very end of it, he said, the point of the point of this is you can't call people crazy just because you don't understand them. He's all because no one's crazy. Everyone's everyone, you know, we're strong people. He's all and you don't know if someone is crazy or if the situation, their environment is just fucked up. And he kind of said that and like did the mic drop of like leaning back and lighting a cigarette, right. and the audience clapped all hard or and, a blunt. Yeah, he wishes it was a blunt, but it was a, a cigarette, unfortunately for him. And yeah, the crowd blew up, and it was um, an interesting moment because, like, there was a—I'll show you—there was a darkness in him when he said that and leaned back and lit the cigarette, and the audience was very happy and, and positive, and he was looking at them like, "This ain't funny, like this ain't smiley shit." You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it was like, really dark. All celebrating that. Yeah, it was weird. Um, so with that in mind, it's spreading to the video game industry. Um, over. At Naughty Dog, um, so one of their ex-employees has come forward uh, with allegations of sexual harassment. So I'm going to read you a little bit of the story here from PlayStationLifestyle.net. The homie Tyler Treese, which sounds like a rapper. Yeah. Cool name. Cool name. Uh, original story here. Former Naughty Dog environment artist and multiplayer level layout artist. What a mouthful. David Ballard has come forward with allegations of sexual harassment. Ballard says that the incident occurred in late 2015 and that his working environment became increasingly toxic due to the harasser being a lead. According to Ballard, when he went to the Sony PlayStation Human Resources Department, which, by the way, is never your friend. HR is never your friend. Um, Try to avoid them. Yeah, avoid HR. Uh, He went to the HR in uh, February 2016 after suffering a mental breakdown and he was fired the next day. Ballard says he was then offered $20,000 to stay quiet and about the ordeal, but he declined the offer. So now with everything going on with Weinstein and Hollywood, he's got, a, you know, the uh, gumption to come forward. And so now that's coming through over uh, Bill Cosby the, effect. 
Exactly. <laughs> uh, Naughty Dog, though, yesterday, they were quick to issue uh, a response to this. i um, loading it up here now. So let's just vamp. Do, 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 do. So who who does he say harassed him? A lead, which is, you know, if you're an environmental artist, he's going to be your lead environmental artist. So someone with a bit of power in the office, I'm sure. Um, so here here's a response from Naughty Dog. Um, yesterday, former Naughty Dog employee David Ballard alleged that he was sexually harassed. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Let me go down. It's down here. Uh, we have recently read on social media that an ex-employee of Naughty Dog, Dave Ballard, claims that he was sexually harassed when he worked at Naughty Dog. We have not found any evidence of harassing received allegations from Mr. Ballard that he was her. Well, what a mouthful that he was harassed in any way at Naughty Dog or Sony Interactive Entertainment. Harassment and inappropriate conduct have no place at Naughty Dog and Sony Interactive Entertainment. It's the corporate jumbo. I'm not going to go along reading the rest. They say they take it very seriously. They're going to. Look into it further. We've investigated ourselves and found we did nothing wrong. Yeah. Um, so, uh, do you think this is going to blow up further in the video game mar- in world, or is this just? It seems like a one event, one you know, kind of outlier. This like an guy. It's, yeah, it's kind of to for it to be one event for for one instance that he's complaining about because they say. It, they say it happened in 2015. Whatever, whatever it was that went down, it was a one-time thing. So it's kind of, it at this point, it's like, why are you doing that? You know? It's yeah. Just let it go. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. I don't know. That's a tough one. It depends because I don't know the situation. If it was one of his acquaintances patting him on the ass, good game, <laughs> like you know, something like that, or if it was something really serious, like he was cornered by someone and felt, you know, like he was in danger. Yeah, um, maybe maybe just with everything going on in Hollywood, he felt like now was the time for him to come forward. And but I don't know, maybe it's a guy looking for money and capitalizing. We don't know. Either yeah. way, you know, I'm not gonna call the liar. I'm not gonna call him a victim. But uh, it is what it is. Hopefully, it's uh, hopefully it's not true. And if it is true, hopefully heads roll for it. You know, can't have yeah. that shit. No, definitely cannot have that. Moving on now to the topic of the show. WWE 2K18. It is finally here. It's all I've ever wanted. Zach, what do you think? Top layer impressions of WWE 2K18. Love it. Doesn't I, I still love the game, but it doesn't live up to the expect expectations that I had for it. Yeah, well, granted, being around me, you probably had pretty high expectations for it because I, I, I always talk about it. And I had very high expectations. I thought we were going to be able to do eight men eliminations. Um, uh, well, you can with the battle royale, but now there's a glitch where the ref's not counting. <laughs> yeah, like we kind of did, and even still, you can't get out of the ring. It's not the same. Yeah, one of my big problems with the game is that they gave you this idea of customization but then don't let you use half of it. Like it, any match you go into, three man, four man, eight man, you bring up the custom match options, and almost more than half of them are are grayed out. You can't yeah. apply them. So it's the like, vast majority. Yeah, it's just a cock tease. Like of of all these modes and things I could do, um, I'm really hoping they'll find a way to address it in a future update because that's an issue, a big issue for me. Like yeah. when I just get disappointed. Uh, time after time again, when I go to the match, uh, make create your own match thing. Um, I'm I'm hoping there's something I'm missing. I'm hoping there's something I don't understand. I'm hoping they'll patch it. Maybe I'm just in denial. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I could. I don't see them uh, giving us an eight man elimination like that. They don't even allow it on a fatal four way. You know, like a lot of games, when you introduce a lot of new features and new engine. Maybe this is just that year where they introduce it, and the next year they'll fine tune it to fix the frame rate. For one, that's another thing. In the eight man matches, the frame rate is noticeably down to like twenty frames or something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe they'll give us more options the next turn around. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think graphically? Graphically, I think it's outstanding. The new lighting is incredible, but the but Mark Henry in the game. Let's talk Mark. Let's Somebody go get the wig split. <laughs> so Mark Henry is the most realistic human in a game I've ever seen. 
like a, he a looks, real human he being. He looks like it looks like a video of him when he walks out his entrance. Yeah. It looks like it is actually him. It's so trippy. It freaked me out when I first saw it. I was like, "Wow!" I have a mental picture of video him standing games in the have ring. gone too far. Yeah, uh, Mark Henry looks amazing in that game. Uh, but then there's Jason Jordan. Yeah, who looks <laughs> like he's missing a chromosome or two. Yeah, or he looks like a Mr. Potato Head yeah. with the <laughs> fucking <laughs> eyes in all <laughs> crooked. Slightly rotated yeah, out. Yeah, like someone didn't. <laughs> I think they didn't predict the Jason Jordan push that he got, and they were like, "No one's gonna use this guy." Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's rough. He's definitely rough looking. Um, <laughs> who else looks really good or really bad? Um, they finally fixed uh, DDP's hair. He used to have ramen hair, where like his long, slick back hair was really tall for some reason. Going back, they fixed that. It looks normal. Um, they no longer have old undertaker face on young undertaker yeah <laughs> it was really weird when he played undertaker from 1991 and he had like 2012 undertaker face didn't look right they fixed that um what else um graphics well, wise and lighting and well one one other thing that was a bit of a, a this i don't want to say disappointment but it's it kind of comical Ty, um dang what's his name uh, who the guy who got uh, who touched Vince McMahon and got oh Titus O'Neil Titus O'Neil okay jeez could not remember his name okay Titus O'Neil he is extremely small in the game like it looks like yeah, they made him purposely so small? smaller I don't Cause know because he touched Vince because he touched Vince. January he looks like he looks smaller than like like he Rusev looks, yes he's he looks smaller than Rusev I don't and he's know. taller than him he's, yeah Titus O'Neil is huge. We should we should go we should do a screenshot of them in the ring and of them wrestling each other if in they ever life. have and just see how different it looks because he looks like a cruiserweight <laughs> he looks, and he's a monster. It looks like like buff black TJ Perkins. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying, what else? Who, who else looks uh, of note? Interesting. Um, I don't know. Psycho they... Sid looks like a. Beast, but yeah, apparently psycho he was. Sid I never always, saw him wrestle. He looks like a psycho. That's just the he's aptly named. Uh Psycho Sid looks like a beast. Uh I was just thinking of somebody too. Uh Jimmy Jam Garvin looks amazing. Jim Jam. Old man. Jim Jam. <laughs> if you only get a chance to watch one entrance, watch Jimmy Jam Garvin's entrance from this game. It's pretty comical. It's oh, amazing. Yeah. I love him. Um, so yeah, graphically, I'm kind of on the same page as you. It's the best looking wrestling game we've seen. Uh, if not just for the new lighting engine and the new skin, as we saw on Mark Henry, yeah, um, really does. It goes a long way to making you believe it's real, you know. Uh, so it's really cool. I'm really excited about that. Um, what, what about the soundtrack? How do you like the soundtrack? Um, it's okay. It's not as good as last year's. It's not, huh? It's yeah, just okay. It's because The Rock did this soundtrack, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love The Rock. Like huge, huge fan, but. I think maybe he should have had a little help from someone in the music industry, you know, <laughs> like, like Elias P. Diddy and, and Snoop Dogg did one year too, right? Yes. Like, yeah. I mean, that makes a little more sense because they're musicians themselves. You know who, had, who, you know, who did a really good uh, curated soundtrack for them was John Cena. He had the one with Kid Ink on it. The one you like that song, well, right? John Cena, another world renowned rapper. Yep. Up there with Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he's actually well, got a, he's got a doctorate in thugonomics. Oh, that's right. So he's also learned. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I like the soundtrack. It's got um, more classic songs than I anticipated. Who who was he going to do a collaboration? Who did he do a collaboration with on the soundtrack? Is that what you're going to say? No, no, no. I mean, in WWE 2K14, John Cena made the soundtrack for the game. Oh, the entire so he chose thing. the songs. On and he it. had no outside help. Mm, I mean, I wasn't there, but does he need it? <laughs> um, Super it's John Cena. Cena. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I like the soundtrack. It had more um, older songs on it than I had anticipated. Yeah, uh, but it was you know it was cool. Uh, what about what you've seen from the story mode? I mean, you haven't seen as much as I've played, but you've seen enough. I'm just... I, yeah, I've I've seen enough, and it looks good. It looks uh, it looks fun. The 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 uh, promos still a little like eh but it's it's i think it's pretty obvious all you got to do is just like follow the same theme throughout your promo but it's just hard to pick pick a theme and and stick with it 
Yeah, the promo engine has gotten better. It's still not 100%, but it's much better than it was, say, two years ago when they first brought it in. It was completely broken and just didn't work. Yeah. Um, um, and running around backstage, I think that's cool. It it's reminds cool. It makes, me of SmackDown. Yeah, exactly. It kind of brings back that Here Comes the Pain uh, feel where you just run backstage and interact with wrestlers, and it's really cool so far. Well, one thing I'll, I will say it's really good for it is I really like how... I can feel an arc happening with my character. I can feel he's taking a path and I feel like he's growing. And that's something a WWE story mode hasn't done in a really long time. So that's, you know, really exciting. Um, If you were to rate the game out of 10, where would you put it? You know, if you think about it. Um, Probably an eight. Okay. Yeah. A little disappointed with uh, like, it seems a lot like a, like just an updated version of 2017. Yeah, but that's what you get, you know, yeah. with, with annual sports games. True. Yeah, so there so there's that, but I just expect sports so much games. Of, yeah. In air quotes, sports entertainment. Sports entertainment games. Um, but I don't know, I just expected more from the customizing maps or uh matches. Yeah, me and too. And so that kind of let me down a little bit. Um Me too. So, I would say 8 out of 10 just because it's graphically it looks incredible and the gameplay is still fun. And the added story mode is much better than last year's, so um, so yeah, I think um, a good a good fair score would be eight out of ten. I I've been leaning really hard towards eight point five, but they they snubbed Arn Anderson this year. Oh yeah, so I can't let that forget about that. I can't let that slide. So for double A, I'm gonna give this game an eight out of ten. Uh, same reason the lighting and graphics engine is amazing eight player system I'm fucking great that it's finally arrived i remember when you could only do four people in the ring remember when you can only do two <laughs> you know so it's cool yeah. hopefully next year they'll polish it and it'll get better and better um the career mode is a definitely a step in the right direction i haven't delved too far into universe mode yet which is seems like the majority of the players that i interact with on reddit play the game for is the universe mode uh, so I haven't had too many interactions with it, but people seem to be liking it. So again, kind of slightly below expectations, I would say, because of the match editor. I was really hoping for more, yeah. but it just wasn't there. So uh, I'm, of course, going to recommend it because it's WWE. So yeah. if you're eight, a f- eight out of ten deserves a recommendation in yeah. my book. Oh yeah, eight, eight out of ten is a great score. Yeah. Uh, so eight out of ten from Crossplay for WWE. 2K18. I, I like your reasoning on that because um, it was going to be 8.5. So you took it down five whole percentage points simply because Arn Anderson isn't in the game. <laughs> I well, love that. It's double A, dog. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> He's got a lot of clout. WWE 2K18, I will say this in closing. Uh, I'm worried. It has loot crates. Uh, yeah. And I'm afraid next year they're going to introduce uh, paid loot crates like microtransactions, uh, what you've seen with Overwatch and Shadow of Mordor and NBA 2K18. Uh, so, And then after that, it'll be the prize boxes. Yeah, and then the prize crates. And then, and then the paid prize crates. And then the paid box box crates boxes. <laughs> Speaking of loot crates, moving on to our second topic and our final topic of the show. Is the whole loot crate thing going too far? What I mean by that is we've seen a uh, kind of a rise in the use of loot crates and paid microtransactions in games over the last year, especially uh, from anywhere from uh, the new Shadow of Mordor game, NBA 2K18, WWE 2K18, even though they're not paid, now has loot crates, Um, you know, Overwatch has had loot crates for years now. Uh, But now you're running into situations where Star Wars Battlefront 2, for instance, where you can now pay money to have an advantage over others online. Where it's just, it is is a $60 game with the economy of a free cell phone game. Um, Now, what I mean by that is if you have money in Star Wars Battlefront 2, you can buy these crates that give you boosts such as uh, when Boba Fett is using his jetpack, he's invincible. Uh, 25% damage on blasters. Um, wow. 10, 10% invincibility chance. 
Um, just things like this that are just, they're huge uh, advantages. Huge advantages. Now, that's a problem in and of itself, right? Now, yeah. here's the kicker is in Battlefront 2, you can un unlock three slots for these. They're star card slots. Okay. So the first one you have in the very beginning, the second two you have to unlock by leveling up to high levels, unless you from level one spend money on loot crates. And if you get a loot crate that's used for like a level 30 character, you can automatically unlock the second and third star card slot from level one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you unlock so you a have... card that would fit in that slot, it automatically unlocks the slot for you from like level one. So that means I could buy the game, go in there with an extra $25, from before I even play my first level, unlock a bunch of loot crates that give me all these uh, boosts that I just mentioned before, and unlock, and I could put three of them in, in my star card. And keep in mind, you can combine these to make crazy shit, you know, and then go into a game and have a complete advantage over the guy that has no money and paid a, but paid sixty dollars for this game. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I get it. Um, I think the only thing that could redeem them is if they have a good rank. Uh, ranked system like how you go from like, like a gold skill one rank? and gold two. yeah oh, like okay, skill okay. ranked to get those people out of the lower levels from the beginning and um so that it'll hurt the kd ratio in the beginning for people when they're starting out at these lower levels <coughs> right but these guys they'll bump up to a much higher level than they really have the skills to be in and they'll yeah, just they'll get, get their asses down. handed to them there so that would be the only thing that could could uh the only thing that could be redemptive for uh, for uh, Battlefront, and the, and the thing is, is it's not black and white. Uh, not all microtransactions are bad, and not all loot crates are bad. In fact, the way WWE 2K18 is doing it, it's not ideal, because now I have to use uh, I have to do like forty five minutes worth of wrestling to unlock enough loot crates to buy a mustache in the game. You know what I mean? So that's a problem. Before everything was just unlocked in the game, and now I have to you know play you know it's annoying it is annoying um but they're not paid and they're not you can't use them against others because you have money if i play the game a lot with my uh create a superstar character hammer harris rochester new york represent and i get the final don't quietly click <laughs> no uh but with hammer harris I play a bunch of matches with him and I take the money that I get from those matches and, and buy loot crates with those loot crates. It'll give me an advantage against you online, but that's okay because I earned it. I played a lot. I didn't pay money. You know yeah. what I mean? You could do that too. You just have to play a lot. You know what I mean? So uh, there is a right and wrong way to do loot crates. And this is like literally the worst example of star Wars battlefront. It's the worst case. And the problem is, is nothing changes. No one does anything about it. Because shortly after, the next worst case comes along. Before, everyone was bitching about Shadow of Mordor. Everyone was boycotting, and then NBA 2K came. Everyone forgot about Shadow of Mordor, bitched about 2K18. No, no change happened. 2K18 went away, and now Star Wars Battlefront 2 is here. Everyone forgot about 2K18. Yeah. And every step, every iteration, they get worse and worse and worse and more predatory and worse. And the games get designed against those who don't pay extra money. Yeah. Um, so eventually people are going to have to stop pretending to be surprised and outraged and just realize that's that's how it is. What do you th what do you think of the state of that though where it's at now? It's an it's How an, did we get here? Um it just the uh demand for games. I think um people the de the demand to play games for even uh older people who have more money to spend. Yeah. So, you know, like the older guys that play, you know, Clash of Clans and, you know, games like that, the pay to win games, those are a lot of mostly like middle aged guys, middle aged men that play those types of games and mm -hmm. they have all this money to throw into it to get, the, you know, to win really. And if they have the money to do it why, and they really enjoy it, why wouldn't they spend more money to win? And so it's just, it just, it's a new demand for, uh, for video games. So it's kind of the uh I don't know the double edged sword of a capitalist society. If the money's there, then they're gonna go for it, you know. Yeah. And money the money there. is there, obviously. You know, uh these companies are making record profits um and from online uh economies. And now they're putting out less product because of it. 
You know, uh, Gra- uh, Rockstar was putting out a game a year up until uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Wow. They were putting out, forget all the games, but it was like Max Payne 3, L.A. Noire, Grand Theft Auto 4, then the next year, every year, and then Grand Theft Auto 5, that was 2013, 2014, nothing, 15, nothing, 16, nothing, 17, maybe Red Dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and and that that's pr- proof positive of how a microtransaction economy just kills content, you know? Um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know how we get out of this. Um, and people have think, to vote with their wallets. Yeah, and I think the art, uh, you know, artistic indie style games will be around because at the end of the day, it's artwork that they're putting out. And so mm-hmm. just like in the movie, you know, in the film industry, there's there's the cheesy movies that with all the tropes that somehow become smash hits. And then there's the indie films that come out that you know that get a good cult following um but you know that's that the um artistically kind of honest uh movies are there so Mm -hmm. the artistically honest games will still be around and we won't you know it's not Ah, just gonna be all these that's a cool viewpoint yeah that's a cool viewpoint it's just gonna create a different you know section of the market yeah right yeah because it's gonna be games for people that'll do that and games for people that won't yeah, and then there'll be the big phony games that are just, you know, supposed to be money makers. Those will be coming out all the time and from the big studios, you just got to expect it. Yeah, that and you got to vote with your wallet, man. That's I think is really what it boils down to. And I'm doing that with Battlefront. Uh you played the beta with me. You saw you enjoyed it. I the enjoyed gameplay it. Gameplay was amazing. You saw I me you saw me enjoy it. You you saw me say this might be a day one purchase and then I found out about the microtransactions, and I'm completely off board. I'm not buying the game now. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? Frustrated. I don't want to deal with that. Exactly. But you know what? The fucked up thing is, is I'm offset by the guy that's gonna spend way more than sixty bucks on microtransactions in this game. Yeah. So they don't care. You know who does it right is uh, Battlefield One. How do they do it? I'm because they're uh, loot crates. All they are are skins. Battlefield 1 also has the worst skins and unlockables I've ever seen in the game. Though. Yes. It's the most disappointing. Here's another shade of brown. Well, they don't. <laughs> I know, but they, it was the time, right? Their studio isn't, uh, you know, they don't have all that income <laughs> from microtransactions to make their loot crates yeah. better. Yeah, well, I also don't want like a carbon filter YOLO swag for Jesus camo <laughs> on my uh, on my M1, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> so maybe I'm glad they don't have crazy ass camos. Uh, but guys, let us know what you think of the whole loot crate fiasco over on Twitter at Crossplay Pod. Guys, I want to thank you so much for joining. Oh, before we go, did you have something to say? No. Before we go, I'm gonna hit my mic really hard, and then I'm gonna say that I wanted to do, you know, Halloween sort of related topics from oh. now until Halloween, and we and we didn't do one this week. Oh, let's do one. So I'm briefly gonna touch on. Um, Unless you have something in mind. Briefly going to touch on a couple horror movies I watched this week. Okay. I've been really in the uh, spooky mood with Halloween coming around the corner. All right. Um, I've watched videos with skeletons in them and gone to sleep without having bad dreams. Wow. Uh, I watched Cult of Chucky on Netflix. It's the new Chucky movie. Um, If you're like me, you saw this movie and rolled your eyes hard as fuck because you're like, Chucky is so dead. The franchise is dead. It stopped being good in the like early 2000s, you know. Uh, But this one is really decent. They brought back the original director and writer. They brought back the original guy that played Andy, the kid. He was now who's now an adult and that plays into the story. They brought back Jennifer Tilly, who was in the last three Chucky movies. And because of that, they pay a lot of attention to the lore and they respect the lore of Chucky as stupid as that sounds and with facial animation and like the computer technology coming as far as it has Chucky looks really cool like his facial movements look really good um so I'd recommend seeing that it's on Netflix for some reason uh it, even though it, <laughs> even though it just for came some out reason yeah well keep your expectations low it is Chucky but it's a fun time uh Andy smokes a joint with Chucky in the beginning. Ah, uh, so drugs. Drugs reference. Drugs reference. <laughs> Where'd you learn that, Cheech? Drug school. <laughs> uh, so there's that. And also new on Netflix is The Babysitter. 
Have you seen any promo for that or anything? It's yeah. Oh yeah, I saw a few. Uh, scenes. Saw enough. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a Netflix original uh, horror movie. By the way, props to Netflix. Shout out to Netflix for getting in the holiday spirit. They've put so much Halloween related content on lately, including original like spooky tales from the crypt type stuff. Ooh. Really cool. Um, but this, the babysitter, is about a young boy who has this super hot babysitter and they have like a brother sister type relationship he stays up past his bedtime only to find out that his babysitter and her group of friends are in a satanic cult that plan to sacrifice him for his blood and he's got to survive the night so it's got an attitude to it it's not that scary it's got an attitude a lot of comedy to it um it's really cool uh so i rec- definitely recommend checking it out it's on netflix it's sexy it's funny it's a little scary um there's Never mind. I'm not going to go into it. I'm intrigued. You just trust me. It's very sexy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you have any uh, any horror movies? Anything you've seen recently you want to throw into the mix here? Do you have a recommended yeah. spooky time Halloween horror movie? Um, yeah, the others. It's a little. It's not spooky or spoopy. Definitely no no spoops. It's more. Uh, it's a little more serious, but um, it's scary as fuck. It it really freaked me out um now i could watch it easily and not be scared but when i first saw it it was terrifying um to give you a little bit of a background it's just an old hollywood or hollywood uh, old england um like mansion that is supposedly haunted by ghosts of people who formerly lived there and died so just really yeah, simple ghost movie i'm looking it up on um wikipedia here it came out in 2001 don't read the twist <clears throat> for okay. your sake I, will I not, want you I, okay, to still yeah, see you're that right. I'm not going to read the twist came out in 2001 uh, it had a budget of 17 million but had a box office of 209 million that's a success uh, stars won Nicole Kidman and uh, no other big names but Nicole Kidman I remember seeing it I don't remember any twists I don't remember much but I saw it what 16 years ago so yeah. um, that's when we got a watch together in the spirit of spooks let's do it tonight well there's a dodger game on tonight that we're about to watch that's very true we're uh kind of getting that postseason baseball fever and we just watched what's that kid's name justin Justin turner Turner, the kid from the lbc yeah the ginger giant just fucking launched a a walk-off home or game ending three run shot (sighs) so beautiful center field guys if you're also a dodger fan Let us know over on Twitter at Crossplay Pod. If you're not, suck it. Guys, thank you so much for joining us over here on the Crossplay Podcast for episode 15. We will see you next week for episode 16. We will see you guys then. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.